Mr. Mill, why was there a decision made to uh, not have the, was it your decision, to have the, not have any of the uh, Rebel 5 back in camp? Well, there was an offer made to, to Therese Oswald, and I deeply respect her reasons for deciding not to proceed at this time. What was the offer of a, a member of cabinet. Uh, that's that's a, for us to discuss, but an offer was made. And any other of the other four uh, were they offered? Uh, no, an offer was made to Teresa Oswald. Okay. Did she tell you why she declined? I'll leave it up to her to give her explanations, but I, I do say that I deeply respect them. Why not the why other four? Why not the other four? I wanted to make the offer to Teresa. But why did you want the exclusion of the other four? No, I just wanted her to be the one that we kept options open for the open for the future as well. Okay. Anybody else? What's the thinking behind some of the uh, uh, the moves you did make with uh, Mr. Saran, for instance? Was well, it payback for delivering? He's, he's, he, he's, he shows great uh, commitment to his community. He's served very well over many, many years, and uh, he has earned the respect of people in his constituency and throughout Manitoba. And uh, I thought it was uh, very important that we continue to increase the diversity in our cabinet. And uh, he represents the first Indo-Canadian ever being in a cabinet in the history of Manitoba. And I thought that was a very important uh, move. And I thought he would do very well in that role. Are you worried about the optics of that? Pardon me? Automatic. Nothing's automatic. Uh, everything requires a decision and a, and a discussion. And thinking there, putting him back on the same job. Simply because uh, uh, he performed well in that portfolio and we have uh, always the possibility of other natural disasters and we want to make sure we have good experience to deal with that. Was the seventh chief uh, uh, carrying too big a load? Uh, you gave him part of his responsibilities yeah, to Mr. Caldwell. That, that was uh, simply uh, an, a recognition that uh, Drew could handle all of that as the Minister of Municipal Government and has lots of experience to do that job. So your cabinet includes a, a lot of people uh, now who were probably not considered uh, you know, very eligible for cabinet until the cabinet resignations and the party was thrown into upheaval. And I'm wondering, you're going to have a lot of people talking about the fact they think that the, the lineup from a, a capacity point of view is a little thinner than it was before. Uh, how do you, uh, in your own mind, how do you defend uh, the introduction of people into cabinet that really would have had very little chance of getting into cabinet were it not for extraordinary circumstances? Well, I'm not sure that I agree even with the assumptions of what you said. As I said earlier, we have a deep, talented and diverse group in caucus. And many people in caucus, including members that aren't in cabinet now, have the ability to serve. We're drawing on people that uh, want to step up and play a role. And uh, the people that we drew on on the last round uh, have performed well. They've done a good job. So I don't think we should ever discount people. Some people were have served in the past and have taken on new responsibilities. Those people are still in caucus. They may potentially serve in the future. But it's completely reasonable to give new people an opportunity to step up and provide leadership. And I think that's what we've done.